Hello, Awana Clubbers. This is Mr. Rudy here, and this week we are in section 4.3, Grace to be Humble. Now, humble is one of those words that you don't kind of use every day in your normal conversation, so we need to look at that word and try to understand what it is. So, and before we get to that, let us look at our memory verse to see how the word humble appears in that. Alright, so we are in James chapter 4, verse 6. But he, God, gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. All right, so there's that word humble again. What does humble mean? Hmm. Now, you notice God gives, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So, actually, proud and humble seem to be opposites, right? Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this word humble. Uh, Mr. Rudy has a video uh, of a reporter that went into a typical American town to ask people uh, what they thought humble was. It's kind of like the uh, man on the street interviews. Okay? Check out this video and then I'll see you on the other side. Here you go. Hi, reporter Mike here. I am on the street of a typical American town to ask people what they think humility is. Here comes someone now. Let's ask her what she thinks. Hi there. Oh, hi. I'm a reporter and we are asking people what they think humility is. What do you think humility is? Hmm, that's a tough one. Let me think. I think humility is something that has to do with being weak. Or maybe it has something to do with the weather. Gotta run. Well, that was an interesting answer. Here comes someone else. Sir, we are asking people, what is humility? I'm proud of my humility. I got awesome humility. I got humility on steroids. Check it out. Running now. Well, that wasn't very helpful. Let's see. Here comes someone else. Excuse me. We're asking people what they think humility is. What do you think humility is? Um, I think humility is when you are real nice to someone even if they are not nice to you. Yep. That's what I think humility is. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day. Well, there you have it folks. People's ideas of what humility is, is as different as people are different. This is reporter Mike, sending it back to you Mr. Rudy. Well, what did you think of those answers? Kind of gives you an idea, most people don't understand what humble is. Well, actually, that's true because that's, that's not a word that people use in their everyday conversation. Now, if you talk about basketball or baseball or football, or you talk about uh, stock market, a lot of people know about that and they know how to define the terms you're using, but humble is a word that a lot of people don't use. So, what is it really? All right, let me give you one more clue. And we find that in Philippians chapter 2. And verse 4 says, Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. So in there is a clue as to what humble is. So humble is not being weak, like that one lady was saying. Humble is not being in competition like that athlete, you know, doing the muscles and all that kind of stuff. And if you think about it, if you tell people you're humble, then you're really not. Hey, George, I was the most humble man I knew all day today. Is he still humble? Uh, not quite, huh? Okay. So, humble is thinking of yourself less, but thinking of others as more important than you. Therefore, their interests should come before your interests. All right. That sounds uh, kind of deep there, right? So, you're probably saying, well, Mr. Rudy, I'm just a little kid. How do, I, how do I show humility? How can I be humble? All right, there are some very specific things in the Bible that are directed to children about how to be humble. And one of them is in Ephesians 6, 1 and 2, where it says, children, obey your parents. Now, being humble isn't being weak. Being humble means to be submissive to somebody else's authority, to somebody else's opinions, to somebody else's decision. So God gave you parents, 
They make decisions about what's good for you. And so when they tell you to do something, you are humble when you obey what they are saying. That's what Ephesians 6, 2 says. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now, for the parents, it's one step higher. God also ordains governments and kings, and he's put them in place so that we would have a society in which we can live calmly and peacefully and rightly with our neighbors. And so when our parents obey the government, such as wearing the mask, paying your taxes, obeying the speed laws, when, when your parents submit to that, they are being humbled to the government. Now, we're supposed to submit our lives to God, right? But do we see God every day? Mm, well, Mr. Rudy doesn't see him every day. But we do have those around us that we can express our, our humility to as we honor God. So Mr. Rudy has a video to show you, and really this is a quiz on humility. So in the video, we're going to talk more about the um, verses that teach us about humility and how you, as a clubber, can show humility and, and be humble to God and to those around you. So take this quiz, be honest with the answers, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, here you go. How can you, as a TNT clubber, be humble to others? Let's see if we can find some practical ways how you can live this out. Let's look at a verse. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Philippians 2.4 This is a definition of what humility looks like when you live it. But how does this work? What do you do? Let's take a quiz. Answer this question honestly. When my parent tells me to clean my room, I usually what? Obey right away? Wait until I finish whatever I'm doing first? Wait until she cleans it for me? Well, waiting to, is not a good idea. Having mom clean is not a good idea. The right answer is obey right away. By being submissive to your parents, you are being humble. Let's try this question. When my parent asked me to help with the outside chores, I groan and complain to myself. Get ready with a happy face. Wait until my parent does the chores alone. Hmm, complaining is not a good idea. Waiting for somebody else to work is not a good idea. The right answer is get ready with a happy face. Being submissive is doing things happily. Let's try one more question. When my teacher assigns homework due in a week, I wait until the night before it is due before starting on it. Start on it right away so I don't forget about it. Forget about it, don't do it at all. Hmm, forgetting and not doing homework is not a good idea. Wait until the night before is not good planning. The right answer is start on it right away so I don't forget about it. That's being submissive to your teachers. Let's look at one more verse. Instead of being motivated by selfish ambition, each of you should, in humility, be moved to treat one another as more important than yourself. Philippians 2.3 So here we see that to be humble, we need to think of others as more important than ourselves. Alright, so let's go back and look at our member verse one more time in James and see if we can put what we learn from these videos into practice here. So. James chapter 4, once again. But he, God, gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So what I want you to remember, clubbers, is that God gives us grace. And in that grace, he gives us the strength to be humble to those around us, to our parents, our teachers, our pastors, our government. And he gives us the strength to live lives that are pleasing to God by being humble and submitting to those around us. All right, I hope that helped explain how God resists the proud, but he'll help you and help those who are humble before him. Have a good week, clubbers. See you next week. Bye.